Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time we broke into a museum in Egypt to try and steal the the broken up and disembodied pieces of clockwork because Sly thought that it would be too dangerous to have clockwork still be in someone else's custody and not be completely destroyed, which I guess is understandable. Clockwork did kill his family after all. We found out through the untimely appearance of Carmelita and her new partner, but it seems, that some other gang of thieves actually beat us to the punch that was the Claw Gang. So now it is our goal to go around and steal back the pieces that we were initially going to try and steal, and so we're going to be heading off to the City of Lights, the City of Love, the City of Pierre, to lead up on the first member of the Claw Gang. So we're going to take ourselves a trip to the Black Chateau. I had to call in a few favors to get the goods on the Claw Gang's local operator. Dimitri, a sort of underworld celebrity, equally at home in high-class art circles and shady back-alley crimes. He was once a passionate young art student who worked hard to develop his own visionary style. Unfortunately, the art world wasn't quite ready for his kinetic aesthetic. So he gave them what they wanted, and started forging old masterpieces. His way of punishing those with bad taste. Dimitri now runs a nightclub on the west side. The thumpy music, colorful light shows, and a hint of danger lure in chic young patrons from far and wide. And it's here, hidden somewhere, where we'll find the clockwork tail feathers. What Dimitri plans to do with the clockwork part is beyond me. But those plans end tonight. One thing I always love about those uh, gearing up cutscenes that happen every time you start a campaign, or I guess in this case an episode, is the fact that Bentley pumps his crossbow like it's a shotgun. That's not how crossbows work, Bentley, and you're supposed to be the brains of the game. Alright, and here we go. Now, first things first, we're going to hop online, do a little bit of online shopping, because we, as you can see, that's the reason why we wanted 300 coins, to get what is actually a big change from this game from the first game, one of the uh, many big changes from the first game, is the fact that ThiefNet allows Sly, Bentley, and Murray to each collect gadgets, because, well, not only are you allowed to play as Sly in this game, but you will also be able to play as both Murray and Bentley. They all have their own set of unique abilities, they all have their own set of... Unique gadgets, they have their, their ups and their downs, but they're still really fun characters to play as. Unfortunately, we can't afford any of them right now, not even Bentley's ability. So for now, we're going to have to hold off and hopefully we get lucky with some money. So for now, we're going to just head back to Sly and make our way to the uh, rooftop of the safe house. I tell you, Bentley, it's going to be a real pleasure this nightclub i share in your enthusiasm but before we hit the inside we'll need to do a little reconnaissance work what do you have in mind i've installed this special antenna on the safe house to help with our first job hacking into dimitri's satellite array the coordinates for the job start beacon have been uploaded to your binocular make your way to this position and i'll give you a full briefing on our objective I'm on my way. So, as you can see right here, uh, this game plays a lot differently from the first slide game, as I keep going over. I'm going to be saying it to the end of time at this point. Uh, instead of a hub area with a bunch of outlying levels that you have to go to complete to get, like, treasure keys and also to get clue bottles and such to break open the safes for the thieves of Kunis pieces... All the levels inside Slide 2 actually are one big sandbox that the game actually makes a lot of use out of. 
yeah, this level's kind of small to begin with, but trust me when I say when we get to like the third episode, it really does open up a lot. There are also, as a return from the first game, the clue bottles. The clue bottles in this game are always 30 in every level, as you can see, and they are scattered throughout the entire area. They are all in set locations, so if, like, if you find them in one place, they'll always be in the same place in multiple playthroughs. I was very uh, wondering of how I wanted to do the clue bottles in this because, yeah, they're very spaced out and I didn't think people wanted just an entire video get dedicated to me just going around and smashing clue bottles and such, even if I did do like a speed up and going around. So I thought of a good conclusion for it. I'll grab any clue bottles that I see that are around me right now and in leading up to the mission that you do have to find a safe in because aside from like one maybe two levels in the game all the saves for the clue bottles are located inside side missions so i'll do this and i'll also have like a little prompt uh, pop up just to give you like a detailed location of the clue bottles or as much of a detail as i can give you and you know if you ever need to figure out how how many clue bottles you have just click on the left stick and you can bring up the thing uh that will give you like your money your clue bottles and all that such there's so the second one right here we're gonna smash that now, there is something really important to do in this first phase of the operation. This is the only time it actually happens in the game, which is why I want to do it right now, and I probably should uh, go back the other way. I want to grab all the clue bottles that are on the ground floor of here. As you saw in like the introductory cutscene to this level, there were flashlight guards patrolling down here. However, until we do the uh, reconnaissance mission, no flashlight guards will ever show up uh, throughout the very start of this level. So it's actually really beneficial to try and get the clue bottles that are down here on the ground floor and in the streets and such before any of the flashlight guards show up because they are a pain to fight. What is going on here? Oh, it's, I never noticed that you could do this in the here. I don't even know if it would, hold on, let me test this. Let's see if this guy notices us. Huh, well I'll be dead. Uh Wow, it's a good thing this guy has zero peripheral vision, but I'll be damned, this actually does work. Huh. Well, the reason I want to come all the way over here is this right here. Uh, that is a really evilly placed clue bottle location. Yeah, it's kind of forgiving when it comes to that because there's uh, a table that you can hide under in case the cra cracking sound of the clue bottle is heard by any of the guards nearby, so you can't hide underneath that table to escape them. But it's still kind of, you know, pretty dangerous. Especially if there's like a flashlight guard that rounds the corner that you didn't know was there. I'm just going to keep going on. I'm going to keep breaking anything I, I see that's breakable as well so we can get that money to get those smoke bombs. Because the smoke bomb ability is invaluable to slide. It will basically allow us to break uh, any guards pursuing us. And it actually can be really helpful. I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to grab the clue bottle on these boats. You don't really need to. I think, like, the only guards that can hop out here are just, like, the two, like, small guards, which I like to call the Enforcer and the Reinforcer, because the Rat Guards, they have a couple abilities. They got melee attacks, which, the they also throw dynamite and rocks at you if you're climbing and such, so it's best to try and not uh, be at too far of a distance from them. The bullfrogs you he see here, it might not be too hard to see them at this point just because I don't think we've actually run into any of the guards that carry megaphones, but the reinforcer type guards do carry megaphones that they, if they spot you, they will immediately start screaming into and it will call any nearby guards, even flashlight guards, to come and help them. There's the other one that's also a really evilly placed clue bottle because this is down on the ground floor. And, of course, this is a very high traffic location for flashlight guards, so that's why I want to grab that right now. Alright, uh, there is our first job, so let's just head over here and hopefully we can avoid these guards. Maybe, if he takes a sweet time. The Bullfall Guards, I think these guys only just throw punches at you. They don't use the wooden batons like the these Rat Enforcers do. And all the flashlight guards, as I should probably point out, all carry ranged weapons, which makes them even more deadly because, you know, ranged combat and all, you don't really have any ranged offenses outside of Bentley. Anyways, let's see what the job is. I need you to hack into Dimitri's communication array so that we'll have access to his database. How am I supposed to do that? To start, you'll need to get to the top of that tower. Then re 
reposition the satellite dish to point at my safe house antenna. If you want to climb on stuff, jump and hit the circle button to grab hold. Try climbing up that pipe. Right. Jump and press the circle button to climb pipes. I'm on it. Ah, the tried and true ability of Sly. Always jumping and pressing the circle button. Up oh, there, up. Oh, yep, yeah, there he goes. He's calling for reinforcements now. I actually wanted to try and get past him, but... Uh, he can't re really do anything. I think they'll... Br yeah, you bring line to sight for them for a while, they'll go back to patrolling. But yeah, those are the types of guards you really want to look out for if you have to do any of the, the small guard types, because if they carry megaphones, they expect a lot more company. First things first, though, I want to break this and get that, and then sneak on over here and get the other little cool bottle. And with that, we are almost halfway done with clue bottles in this level. Clue bottles are not that hard to find. They actually do get really evil with them around the third uh, episode. It's just... It's understandable. This is an introductory level, so it makes sense that they don't hide them too hard here. Alright, well, with that, that's two antennas down, just one more to go. I don't see any clue bottles that are around our location right now, so let's just make our way to the third antenna. Ah, uh, thief's best friend. Aside from money, rooftops. Oh, it's a good thing there's no guards in the vicinity, Bentley. And with that, it's time to steal all his ones and zeros. Nice work, Sly. I'm downloading from Dimitri's mainframe app. Sly, what happened to your hat? All in a night's work. So, where do we go from here? Your next job is to break into the nightclub and take some reconnaissance photos of the clockwork tail feathers. To get inside, you'll have to sneak through an old wine cellar beneath town. Okay, I'll head out for the cellar. Oh, that's why he took his hat off. Very interesting hairdo you got there, Sly. I'm guessing it's probably from all those years uh, having that hat stuck on top of his head. Alright, well, there's the wine cellar, but before we head out, I might as well just jump down here onto these boats and grab the clue bottle that's right outside it. Yoink. And I think, aside from one clue bottle that was back by the water tower, that is all the clue bottles down on the ground floor. So thankfully, we don't have to worry about flashlight guards for... A good, decent amount. We can actually avoid the ground floor a lot. Good to see you, little buddy. I guess the way through the wine cellar is guarded by those rats. Bentley thought you might like some help clearing them out. Sounds like fun. You and me, back to back? Totally. Outnumbered, fighting impossible odds. It's perfect. All right, pal. Let's get to it. Well, before we get to it, Sly, uh, let's do some more property damage. Oh, wow, they actually did hear me. I guess in the original, they uh, made them uh, less good at hearing because you could break that entire section over there and the, the rat guards would not hear you one bit. But we had the powerhouse Murray with us, so he made quick work of them. Honestly, they should have just sent Murray in to do it all by himself. You'll have to double jump. Hit the X button to jump. Then, while in the air, press it again to get some extra air time. Looks like you're on your own from here. Eh, I'm used to it. Thanks for the help. Anytime, partner. Alright, well, before we make our way and jump and hit the circle button twice, uh, I want to do a lot more property damage because... Uh, I, need, I need my money. We're almost at 300, and, you know, I really need my money. I need to buy useless things that I don't need, even though what I'm going to be getting with that money is actually pretty damn useful. 
This is actually a really good uh, area to grind off some money because all these small boxes do give you a fair decent amount of points, even the small barrels as well. One of the big things that you definitely want to keep at uh, breaking are the like the cigarette dispensers or the ashtrays, I guess, would be the more apt word for them. Because you can smack them twice and they uh, regurgitate even more money after the second hit. So it's really invaluable. to If you see one of those things, definitely break it. Just going to break this booze right here real quick. Ooh, that one had a lot of money in it. All right, now that the room's cleared out, let's hop over, do a bit more property damage, and let's get to thieving. Sly, in order to get past these lasers, you need to crawl under that table. To do that, get near the table and press the circle button. Sneaky, sneaky. Now, one thing you might notice about the uh, coins as they looked like in the first level is the fact that all the coins in the levels i think this was also the case in the first slide game as well is that they all actually have a unique appearance to them in the field the the icon for them is always the same which i guess is understandable because you know they oh wow he actually does move i didn't think he did uh the coins in this uh the coin icon just stays the same because they didn't really want to differentiate it a lot I think in the fourth game, they actually did change the coin icon up in the corner. For now, we're just going to have to avoid the flashlight guards because... Yeah, the flashlight guards, if one of them spots you, it's an instant failure of the mission. So this is just basically a pure stealth uh, level. Thankfully, for their ineptitude, I'm going to break the break room. Hey, where did that money come from? Hmm. Also, the only flashlight guard in this entire series that actually knows how to use his arms. He just stays in one place, and you gotta hide under the table until he turns his flashlight away. And then get immediately caught because the beep was still on me. Okay, game? I disagree because his arm was already outstretched at the other end, but alright. I think if you... Nope, you actually do get coins. It's actually, I guess, maybe a good thing to let the guards catch you a few times if you want to uh, get the bottles to come back and get some more money out of it. Although, I will say, in this game, aside from like the very start of it, money is never going to be an issue for us because of one of the chief mechanics of this game that we won't be getting into until we get done with this recon section. So for now, I'm, I'm not even going to try and get his attention. I'm just going to crawl right through here. Break the break room again. I will say one thing about the flashlight guards. They actually do have uh, two uh, variations of their flashlight cones. Right, now I'm going to sneak. Um, as you can see, there's like two different like co color variations where it's like one's like a very like translucent yellow and then there's like a hard yellow in it. The translucent yellow, the flashlight guard will not actually see you. Okay. Oh, he did hear that. He just won't move from his position. All right. That works for me. Uh, the translucent yellow one, if a guard sees you, that's actually a little bit of a grace period that you can try to escape them so long as you don't panic. But if they see you in the hard yellow one, it's an instant detection. Right, jump and hit the circle button. Got it, Bentley. These mirrors right here are actually a really good uh, spot to get points as well. Although, now with me breaking, let's see, let's see, one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got about 63 years of bad luck. That sneak attack slam boom only works on guards who haven't seen you. Wait until this guy turns his back and then let him have it. This is actually something I've joked about uh, throughout the uh, stream series I did of 
uh, the entire Slice series. Bentley's kind of a psychomaniac in this series, as I've come to find out, because he has, like, a bloodlust like no other. It doesn't get into, like, maybe the third game it actually does start to show itself, but he's got, like, the most graphic takedowns of any of the guards in the entire series. Aside from the environmental takedowns of the guards, but we'll get into that later. All right, I see one, two, and I do believe that there's, there's actually rats hiding up, but yep, there's rats up on the balconies as well. I'm gonna try my best to at least sneak attack a couple of them. If you get in a fight with those rats, the sneak attack won't work. Mm -hmm. It's purely a stealth move. All right, come on, turn your back, buddy. There's usually a good tell when the guard decides to give up uh, investigating you. It's with the rats, it's when they start sniffing around. That's usually the tell that, eh, there's nothing here. My buddy Frank is already knocked out in the corner over there, but, eh, there couldn't have been anything serious. It's also a good thing these rats have terrible hearing, by the way, because they uh, will not be able to come down here so long as you don't get into combat with their friends. Alright, I think at this point, after we get done with this recon mission, I might be able to get both Sly and Bentley's upgrades. Although I might try my best to work towards Sly and Murray's because Bentley will be the last member of the game that we can play as in this first level. Judging by the angle, it should lead to the printing press room. Alright. Well, we could go through that air vent to the printing press room, or we could sneak up here, take out the guards, and get more money, which I kind of choose to do the latter. Also, I want to point out one thing, because it's really weird in my opinion, and I don't know if there was actually going to be more with this level. So, for now, can I even get any? No, I did not get a single coin out of all this stuff. How dare I? How dare this game not let me get profit off of property damage? Uh, Sly, please. Sir, I don't think there's a rat guard up here. I guess it was only like three guards. I could have sworn there was like four in this area. Hmm. Well, either way, uh, this is the location I wanted to talk a little bit about because I honestly have no idea if there was going to be... the hell? Huh. I don't know if there is like... there was supposed to be more with this level or not, but there's this door right here. And it leads back into where the flashlight guards were patrolling. Like, right there is where the one that was moving back and forth. Uh, and over there is the location of the first one that we learned to take down from Bentley. And then there's the one that leads to the wine cellar. And then there's this area up here. There's absolutely nothing up here. And aside from a couple couches and some potted plants and such to get a few coins, this area up here is completely pointless. So I don't understand why they even put it up here to begin with. This is... Some very durable plants. There we go. Like, if someone can please tell me uh, what was up with this area, I really appreciate it. I guess I can understand this, like, spot right here having, like, another rat guard. But, like, for that door right there to lead to absolutely nothing, it, it just always uh, felt off to me. Well, either way, let's head into this vent and let's reach the printing press room. Oh, that's a good thing we ended up in a location that Dimitri can't see us. Alright, so we got a few things to take a picture of. We need to take a picture of Dimitri, the printer, and the generator. Well, Dimitri is out of focus right now, so let's get a picture of the printer first. Let's take a picture of the generator. Attention, please do not blow up the generator, the MGMT. That generator seems to be powering the security systems down here. 
It looks more like a giant boiler with a giant, like, lock and chain in front of it. And there's the lounge lizard himself. That's our target. The bait tray. Professional lounge lizard and international forger. That should do it, Sly. Head back to the safe house and we'll cook up a plan of attack. Alright, with that, the job is complete. The recon photos are a grim reminder of what the modern thief is up against. Spotlights, stepped up patrols, the sum of it all renders a direct assault impossible. To solve this puzzle, I'm going to need some more intelligence. First, replace this bugged painting with one Dimitri has in his office. Once in place, we should be able to listen in on his communications. Second, if you see the boss, tail him. We might learn something from studying his movements. Once we've got a proper understanding of the operation, those clockwork tail feathers are as good as ours. <laughs> 